The Belt and Road Initiative is a long-term economic project designed to fold the flow of global resources into Chinese economic interests. I mean, there's nothing new or dystopian about this. It's what every country does in order to push itself into a stable future. The fear for many people is that with advanced economic influence, there usually follows increased ideological influence. We've seen this with America, with Britain, with Rome and the Byzantine, etc., etc. A very material instance of China's state influence supplanting trade interests can be seen in the example of Sri Lanka. China offered Sri Lanka a loan in order to help improve its infrastructure, as it has done with many other nations along the trade belt. Sri Lanka has found itself unable to meet repayments and as a consequence has been offered the opportunity to sell some of its developments back to the Chinese in order to offset costs. In shorthand, this means that parts of Sri Lankan infrastructure, such as the Hamban Toto port, which is essentially now Chinese territory for a period of 99 years, are being sold off in an effort to prevent total foreclosure. Economists refer to this as the debt trap. Again, this is nothing new and is not evidence of an insidious agenda on the part of China outside of the obvious interests in terms of economic leverage. There are long-term political concerns, and how concerned we are about them depends on how much we care about the influence of state communism versus state capitalism. China's influence is growing and will continue to grow. And on one level, good luck to it. What else do we expect it to do? It may be that globalization will have the benefit of removing many Chinese citizens away from the state gaze, allowing them to reimagine their lives in ways they previously hadn't considered. It may be that a diaspora will feed back into the Chinese state itself and improve the lives of the Chinese working class. And that would be the best result. A world where questions of China's influence are moot because China becomes a thing that we are happy to see influence the world. And it has so much to offer. A culture, history, and library of thought that challenges and enriches our too easily self-assured Western outlook. I don't think now, though, that the world is ready for a healthy assimilation to take place. I think that right now, China just wants to be the most influential power on the planet, and that's all there is to it. There's been lots of times when I've questioned American culture. There will be times when I do so again. The global problem of American military intervention remains a thing that we should be consistently interrogating. Interrogating with extreme prejudice. However, if it came to a choice between which I would like to see future generations inhabit, the Western democratic style would be my preference every time. This economic standoff between China and the US is basically buying us time before the eventual interflooding of state agendas, buying us time in which we can try to nail down an optimum objective for the West, one that we won't have to defend aggressively or impose invasively because its virtues will be obvious. We might not get there, but we have a chance. We certainly do not have a chance if America comes apart. Next week... Is America coming apart?